five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the Ramble. I am Alex Bennett, your humble and obedient host, and I will be here until midnight Eastern Daylight Time tonight. If you're listening to us live, if you're listening to us in a repeat, well, it's, you know, you can figure out what time it is, right? Okay. Anyway, uh, listen, we got an interview here, and this was done a few days ago, so I'm not wearing the same outfit I'm wearing here. And, uh, well, you know, you know, we got to go talk to an ex-wife. It's, it's the law. Ladies and gentlemen, look at her. Wait a minute. What is that? What is <laughs> yeah, that? Look at this her. is Ronnie Bennett. What is that thing you've got? Is that on, on your... my face? Well, I, I know what they are. I've seen them before, but yes. you know. Yes, it's for oxygen, and because of my COPD and my, therefore, difficulty with breathing in the past few months, I now have um, a home thing that makes oxygen for me and I use and I have little tanks to take with me when I go out of the house yeah. Um, yeah. and apparently that's going to be with me <laughs> for the foreseeable future yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why, why the oxygen because my lungs don't work very well well uh, yeah yeah but uh, and you say it's from COPD you were telling me before. Yes, otherwise known as emphysema, according to my pulmonologist. Yeah, yeah. What do they do? They suddenly, they gave everything initials now, you know. Yeah, I... I it, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not supposed to sound as bad as emphysema. I have COPD. Oh, well, is that anything like emphysema? You know. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to show you what I look like these days. I don't really need this right now. Yeah. Now, you were telling me, we, we did this interview yesterday, uh, and we had to restart it and redo it today, which we had to restart several times as well until I got it right, until we had it fixed. Technical problems. Technical folks. problems. So the question is, okay, uh, the, the question is, um, um, what are the, you said there were prejudices about I wearing that, that thing. there always are against people who's, disabilities or difficulties are obvious mm -hmm. um, people in wheelchairs people with who wear uh, there's a word for that thing that I had on my nose and I've forgotten it I think it's something like cannula and uh, uh, and and I and I think that particularly with old people of which there are already ageist problems I think that there's a, a sense by abled people who don't have these problems that we're not quite up to snuff intellectually <laughs> as everybody else either and and this is what people don't know what to say to you they don't know what it means when they see this thing stuffed up your nose and around your ears or when they're you know it's like little kids always need our help you always have to look out for little kids because they're liable to run into the street or do something that will harm them. So you need to keep your eye on them. And so you look and you look downward, like with children, to people in wheelchairs. And I think that for as many people who are there to be helpful, I think there are people that don't know how to deal with that, that don't treat you like the human being that you are as something lesser. Or if they are aware of it, try not to do that. And that, of course, just makes it more obvious. <laughs> and, uh, and so I think we should, in, in the same way as um, you fight back against uh, ageism or age discrimination in the workplace, I think we need to be aware of that and do something about our behavior well, if, you know, if uh, it's lacking in some you, manner. You bring that up that people look at you differently because you're wearing a breathing device. Uh, oh, I, you're the, what a good word! I didn't think of that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 
a, a, yeah, or a BD. We'll use the initials, a BD. <laughs> a, I have a BD for my COPD, uh, which goes <laughs> along with my MS whatever, NBC. I, it's, uh, the point is that you said that to me yesterday, and I, w I was thinking, you know, I don't think I was, if somebody came up to me and had one of those devices, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think twice about it. I might ask them, why do you have that? Obvious, it's obvious for breathing, but maybe there's an attendant problem along with it, you know. Uh, but I, uh, I, I, I just, I never ever would have reacted to that negatively. I'm not saying everybody. I just said, I'm just saying that I have sometimes seen people Do they look at you out of the side of their eye? Yeah. With people who are using some kind of device to help them get through whatever is difficult for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, do we treat people differently because they're in a wheelchair outside of the fact that we try to be helpful or get out of the way or whatever? You know? Um, there was a question in well, there that no, I missed. Well, it. Yeah, the, no, the question <laughs> is: Do we do we do we act differently towards people in wheelchairs outside of the accommodation that we would give them because of their needs? Hey, you know, I think this has been around a long time. Uh, something else I'm bringing up it could, connected to this, but I don't go to movies and theaters ever anymore, and haven't for years. But the the few times that I've been in them, I've noticed that. On the main floor, if there's sometimes an upper floor, um, that they leave empty places that's in the back at the row. end of yeah. rows for, for wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. Well, they had to. It wasn't that they suddenly decided they were going to help people in wheelchairs, but cities like New York said, you have a theater, the back row has to have these empty places for seats, for wheelchairs. Wheelchair I think access. that's a terrific thing. However it came about, I think that's a terrific let, thing. Let me tell you something. I love people in wheelchairs. Let me explain this. <laughs> let me explain this. Follow me on this one, okay? Uh, every week we go to Costco. And when I go to Costco, I have my Costco cart. When I come back, uh, there's always been these stairs going up to the front door, like about three or four stairs. So I had to ooh, lug this thing up because it had beverages in it and, you know, large yeah, items. I know. Right from Costco. How heavy groceries can be. Well, from Costco, they're even heavier because you're buying 36 cans of Coke, oh, 36 wow. bottles of Snapple. I think about that very yeah. carefully of how much weight I'm buying when I'm in the store. Well, somebody in the apartment house, the apartment house we're in, um, is in a wheelchair. So they had to put in a ramp. Uh huh. Solves my problem with my car. Yes. So I Absolutely. love people in wheelchairs. Yes. You know, I say hello to her all the time. I keep thinking I should say thank you so much for getting the ramp put in because it makes my life easier too, but I haven't done that, you know. Well, I think that anything that's good for old people or people with get around problems ambulatory problems yeah is always good for everybody at every age you know curb cuts at the corners mm. that are supposed uh, they're they're not just for old people who might have trouble with stepping up or down think of mothers pushing a stroller with their baby in it yeah. you know or a young kid yeah they need those cu curb cuts too there are grocery stores now that are hanging those plastic um, magnifiers so you mm -hmm. can read the small print on the cans or boxes oh, really? that you're buying. Some of them are. Wow. And some of them are putting a few benches around the supermarket, which have gotten, you know, the size of Costco, um, that are benches where people can sit and rest, for especially. But it's not just old. Old people get tired walking all those long distances. But so do women with babies or fathers with babies. The, or yeah. maybe the kid is screaming his damned head off and you need to sit down and, and you know, kind of get him back to normal. Mm. Uh, a bench is a handy thing to have in a great big store. I have a question. All of those kinds of things are good for everybody. I have a question, though. Um, um, uh, most people who we would say need to use a, a handicap access are in wheelchairs because that's that's really what they're made for the ramps you know the, the seats but they're easier the to walk up the stairs for a lot of yes, other people exactly exactly but what, here's what i'm here's what i'm saying at at uh, dr uh, grocery stores 
they have handicapped parking spaces. And I'm thinking, they don't need the handicapped parking spaces because they've got a wheelchair. So they can get from wherever their car is to... No, that's not... Have you ever tried to get in and out of a car in a, with a wheelchair? Well, I mean, they're going to have to get out and use the wheelchair because that's the only yes, way they can they get around. they need the extra space for handicapped Oh, I spaces. see. Okay, well, that, that, that... Okay, I'll go along with that. I was just thinking that when I... <laughs> when I... When I... were handicapped parking spaces and I was still smoking, that's like 30 years ago... Uh, I used to think, you know, I could use one of those handicapped parking spaces because I get out of breath walking all the way from the parking lot to the <laughs> store. But now that I don't smoke, I don't have that problem. So, yeah. Well, and, and should you please remain as you are now and not need any help because, you know, now I've got these little tanks that I wear when I want to mm -hmm. go out that I can bring oxygen with me. I have a, I've forgotten the name of what they call this thing, this big heavy thing that mm -hmm. it makes your audience, your oxygen. You don't need to have tanks brought in every week. And then, but then I do have a tank they left here, a great big tank. They leave here. The guy explained to me that it's for power outages. Oh, and okay. And that never occurred to me, you know, and yeah. it lasts 10 hours. So I said to him, and if the power outage lasts, you know, like eight or nine hours, it's getting toward 10. I'll bet you guys are really busy. And he said, yes, they are. When See, we didn't happens. think about that. Didn't think about that. But that's. Uh, you know, so I didn't either. It was a surprise to me. I said, what is that for? Yeah. And if anybody comes in and says, what is that bottle for? You say, well, I scuba dive. <laughs> it doesn't quite look like that. But OK, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> You know, uh, the one thing I always used to get uh, wonder about was like uh, Braille in elevators. Like, how do they know exactly where the Braille number is for the button? I mean, uh, I, I, well, I, the other one I always have problems with are places like banks and some stores say seeing nowadays they're, they're companion animals or something mm -hmm. like that. They used to be seeing eye dogs. Yeah. And, uh, Service and animals, they're called. Seeing eye dogs only on a sign. Yeah. Well, if that dog is helping a blind person, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then I finally figured out. I finally figured out it wasn't for them. It's for you and me. If we have a dog, to tell us not to bring the dog in the store. Okay. All right. You know uh, that that's fair. Uh, but gee, I wish I could get some of the privilege of handicapped people. You know, I wish I could use. I always like see. Here's here's something I do, and but I you know, the payoff is not worth it. Tell me if this is wrong, but I always, when I'm in a theater or in an office building or wherever, and I need to use the bathroom, I always use the handicap stall. Why? Because it's roomy. <laughs> Really? Let me tell you something about that. If um, you've had the kind of surgery I had, and mm -hmm. there are other kinds of surgery, I'm sure, that do the same thing, when you have to use the facilities, it mm -hmm. means right now. Yeah. Right now. And so if they're... You don't necessarily, if, if, if you you know, I can walk, so I don't necessarily need the handicap stall. But if there were very few and they were all full and somebody who doesn't need it is in the handicap stall, mm -hmm. is that the right word? Yeah. Um, I would be pissed off big time and I'd be peeing on the floor. So, yeah. Well, you know, that could be entertaining. Uh <laughs> You know, but I, I just, uh, um, uh, I, you know, I, so I use the handicap stalls. I always use them. And I've never had a handicapped person knock on the door and say, hey, I need that. Which, in which case, I'd get right out, you know. But well, it's nice. You can spread out, you know. There's room. <laughs> uh, I, can, uh, I, can, I can sit in there for a while reading if I have to, you know. It's very nice. But uh, well, I, Can we move on? Hmm? Can we move on? I th well, I just, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, and I have, a, I have a person who calls my show. His name is Patrick, and he is in a wheelchair. And I confessed this to him one day on the show. And he said, oh, I have nothing against that. You know, he said, very seldom do, handy, do wheelchair people need to use the bathroom. 
you know, in great numbers, the chances are that you're not going to be locking somebody out who needs it. Can we go back to the ramps for a minute? Yeah. I've often wondered that if you don't have a powered wheelchair, the one that they, I guess they're electrically powered, you plug them in and they mm -hmm. charge. Yeah. When, you, when you're doing it by hand, it must be so hard to get up a ramp. Yes. You think? Well, it, a lot of people today, most of the wheelchairs that I see, like the one in my building, the woman who has a wheelchair, they're electric. Uh, it's more common than uncommon for there to be electric. Yeah, uh, however, I just the other day at, at the medical center where I go, yeah. I saw at least two people, maybe I wasn't really paying, I wasn't thinking about this at the time, so I wasn't paying close attention. But I know I saw two people with hand operated. Could that be because they were using the hospitals? No, it wasn't uh, the hospitals. Oh, oh, okay. You can't even do You have to have someone push well, the can hospital I, wheelchair. Can I say something not nice in this discussion? And that is, uh, um, I go to Costco, and Costco, if you need them, have carts. Oh, those little carts you drive around. Yeah. My mother used those at the end of her life yeah. the last and, couple and of years. And it seems that everybody who drives these carts is terribly inconsiderate and acts like a shit. Okay. Maybe they're bad car drivers too. No, you know, I mean, it's, it's like, <laughs> out of my way. I'm using the cart, you know. And, <laughs> and I'm going, you know, my feet are hurting me. I think I'm going to start using the cart. <laughs> you know, I mean, they don't they don't ask you are you what's your infirmary? You just say I need a card. I need one of the one of the the uh, accessible cards or whatever they call them. I don't know. I don't know what they call them. But but, but my mother used those. And this was a long time ago. The last couple of years, she'd had surgery on both of her hips, and it was hard to walk for any length of time. Mm -hmm. And she used them. The problem with those. Um, my mother at least could stand up. I mean, she wasn't completely immobile. But if you're down there driving this little cart, and what you want is on the top shelf, I'm standing up and too short for the top shelf half the time. Um, but uh, but that makes that you have to wait for somebody to come along and say, would you get me the box of cereal? Some people who are wheelchair bound uh, do have like a little thing that they can... Has a, oh, a grabber. A they grabber. Do. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I have a grabber from after my surgery because I wasn't supposed to lift my arms too high. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, so you know, uh, uh, um, gosh, I wish I were handicapped. God, life would be so much easier. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Listen, I'm get, I'm getting that way. I got my feet are killing me because I've got a uh, 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 peripheral uh, neurologist neuropathy or whatever. I don't so maybe soon I will be able to use the the electronic carts at uh, at Costco, and go well, we get out get of my way. I'm I'm things. I have problems. Out of my way. Yeah. So. We get old enough. We need those things. It's a good thing we have them. You know, yesterday you you told me that uh, you know sometimes people pop up in your life who you have not seen for years and years and years. Yes. Um. Uh, Thanks to the internet, those things happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm trying to remember her name right now, but like for instance, remember the remember the guy who was a record promoter in Houston who died of cancer, but his wife died first of a heart attack, and she was left. The kid was left as a. I'm in, I'm in touch with with their daughter who came yes. to visit. Yes, well, her daughter came to visit me, and on a couple of occasions, and uh, uh, it's wonderful when suddenly somebody so far in your past appears. And, and also in that case, I was so happy that her life turned out so well because it was one of the more tragic stories we oh, knew. Her father was dying in the hospital and, uh, of cancer at uh, MD Anderson. And her mother, who you think is going to then take care of the kid after the father dies, suddenly gets a massive heart attack and dies. And then a couple of weeks later, he dies. And this kid is an instant orphan. And uh, you and I helped take care of her, and you know we we were we were there for her, and then I didn't hear from her for years, and all of a sudden she popped back in my life, you know. And we've seen her on a couple of occasions, and I, I I love her dearly, Karen. I have another one for you that just happened to me, from the same city, Houston. Yeah. Uh, do you remember Rob Landis? Well, now that's what you two were telling me about yesterday. Rob Landis, 
I see you didn't remember the fever tree, which was the group he had. Well, well now it's called the Rob Landis Trio, what, and they have a lot of CDs, and they play all around. And um, But what I remember him in terms of his music most yeah. for is that he could play pop music in the style of the classical, as a classical composer would have written it. So you had Beatle, him doing Beatle tunes as Tchaikovsky or Chopin or Beethoven yeah, would have yeah, written them. Yeah. <laughs> it's so wonderful. <laughs> He, uh, we used to go to his house for dinner. This, you may not, you probably remember this. And they had how many cats? I mean, the, the house was just filled with cats. I they, don't remember. They were that. cat people, and we were I having. Must have had a wonderful time. We, I love cats. We were having dinner one night, and all of a sudden, in the middle of the table, two cats decide to go at it, and they're humping each other uh, in the center of the table. And I think I made a comment like, really nice centerpiece you got there. I don't have any. You don't remember that. that. I remember that. Are you sure it was that person? I'm sure involved? it was them. Yeah, absolutely. Now, is he still married to the same woman? or? He never was, Alex. Oh, he never was. Okay. Well, I, mean, I, I haven't followed the guy that closely in these years, so. So uh, is he going to come see you, or is he uh, going to call oh, you? Oh, we're just or? exchanging email. Yeah. You know, he found me on the internet, and um, and he sent me a wonderful note. And I haven't gotten back to him yet. It's only been a couple of days, and I will today or tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it wonderful the world of the internet and how many people come back into our lives that, quite frankly, we didn't want to have come back into our lives? Oh, that's not true about Rob or <laughs> oh, anybody Rob, or no, Karen Rob, or anyone. Rob, it's not true. No, yeah. Um, it, uh, I just heard I, I, it was either a radio or a television commercial for Ancestry, which I'm not particularly interested in. I figure you look at my face, you know where my ancestors are from. But, um, but isn't that how you they, found your son? They, what isn't that how you found your son or he found you? Yeah, yeah, he did that already. Yeah, let, yeah. Can, let me finish my story, okay? Um, and uh. See, now, you can't do that to me in I'm my sorry. old age. I forget I, where I hey, was. I'm in that old age, and that's why I keep interrupting. <laughs> what anyway, was I saying? You, you were... Now I, for, I forgot. See, folks, you're now looking at two old people getting older by the second here. Uh, you were t we were talking about... Uh, oh, you were talking about Ancestry.com. Oh, the, I heard the most interesting thing on the yeah. commercial radio or television. I don't remember what. They have that you can search if you're a member. You know, you pay your dues there. Um, they have some a huge number of thousands of high school yearbooks. Ooh. Wouldn't that? I mean, if you were into that kind of thing, that would be really interesting to have. What and for a lot of young people. That would mean their grandparents and great grandparents and what they looked like back then. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. I so, mean, if you were 15 now, there's you know those kind of books go back long enough to be their great their grandparents or great grandparents. Yeah, but I mean, like for instance, I'm they, I'm sure they have Drake High School in in uh, San Francisco. Well, I thought that I've forgotten that it, it was just an astonishing number of thousands. The question is how they got these. Uh, you know how they managed to acquire these if, if they go back that far well so they go back as far as the, the schools have kept them so so they go to the schools and say do you have i a, don't know i didn't ask well them. i'm just trying <laughs> i'm just trying to figure out the process i really here. don't think it's important maybe i want to start them. that business. not that hard i could do it if i wanted to okay well let's do it we can make a fortune off of it you know, They've already done it. Well, we'll put them out of business. We'll we'll be, we'll one up them or something, you know. Um, but um, anyway, so so um, it is that breathing device limiting your access to places, or is it helping? I mean, in other words, you, you know, it was your 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 uh, ability to get around was kind of hampered by the breathing problems. Yeah. Is this making your getting around? Well, then I can more, breathe. Is it more accessible? Are places more accessible to you now? Well, everything is accessible to me, but mm -hmm. it was, uh, I mean, you know, if you if you can't breathe, you, you can't enjoy anything. So this allows me to go places and I can breathe. So 
better. Good. Better to breathe than not. Good. Well, I'm happy. <laughs> I, I, I'm happy that you're breathing, and in, on top of that, that you're happy with your breathing, which I think is a is a plus. Oh boy, uh, you know, you told me this line years ago, and I've used it ever since, and that was Betty Davis's "Getting Old Ain't for Sissies." You know, I'm so tired of it. I'm really? so tired of it. Everybody uses it for every situation they could think of, and right. I would be happy. You know, she said that after, within the period of 12 months, she had a broken shoulder, mm -hmm. three strokes, and I'd forgotten there was something else, all in the period of a year. And afterwards, I don't remember if it was in a book or she just said it and someone quoted her. But you can't blame her after a I'll year like I, that. It's strange. I watched a movie the other day with her. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it, something of August. It was like one of her, maybe her last film. She did it with Lillian Gish. And Ann Southern was in it. And it was the last film Ann Southern ever made. And it was, and she, and, and she was so old that he said, starring Betty Davis. And the movie comes on, I'm watching it. And all of a sudden I realize the woman I'm watching is Betty Davis. I mean, she was, she had gone downhill so badly you couldn't even recognize her as Betty Davis. So. We did an interview at the Barbara Walters specials, one of the last years I was there, which would be the late 80s. I don't remember when Betty Davis died. Mm -hmm. But it was with Betty Davis after she'd had those three strokes and the broken shoulder and something else. And, um, and she wore a beautiful silk dress. Mm -hmm. And she was, you know, we were getting them all set up and she's in her chair and all of that. And I realized that um, the dress, of course, was, you know, over her knees, but you, it looked like, you know, that her, that her knee was like this big around under the wow. silk. Wow. Um, you could, you know, just yeah. by the shape of the silk hanging over her knees. And I was thinking then how hard her life must have become, how difficult it yeah. must be. Yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Can you believe it? Or has it seemed like ages to you? Uh, anyway, uh, great talking to you again. Love talking to you. And people can find you at timegoesby.net. That's your blog. Yes. It's yes. What, it, what it's all about, about getting old. And also now she's kind of dealing with, you know, what she's going through in these trying times for her. And uh, I think you do a great service. You know, you really help people. And you help people relate to getting older. Or in many cases, like it's happening with you, having some kind of a disease which is not positive <laughs> alex it's turning out to be whack-a-mole first you got cancer today now the copd yes, yes. <laughs> now the breathing machine yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but as long as you keep whacking those moles we'll be seeing you next week you know anyway hey listen a great talking to you again and uh and you, know, you. and uh, the go, 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 uh, time goes by dot net folks ronnie okay. bennett thanks ronnie <laughs>
Uh, I'm thinking of going down to three days a week. I, you know, I just, uh, I, I, it, it's one, it, it, you know, she was talking about whack-a-mole with your health, you know, that you just seem to be knocking one thing down, another thing down. And there always seems to be another problem, another problem here. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, our lines are now open. Okay, here comes Charlie Wallace, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me see here. It was Charlie? Yeah, Charlie was up up already. And, oh, already. you got to kill your microphone and you got to give us some video there, Charlie. Okay, and you've got. See, there's something coming in there. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Let me see here. Here comes Vernon Nunn. Uh, let me see here. What? Yeah. Okay. Well, you're. Oh, now you're. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Let me. Let me. Let me go put Vernon in here. Let me give him a. Uh, let me give him a space. Okay. There he is. I think. All righty. Let me move this down here, and uh, let me uh, transition over here to there. Okay. So there's Vernon at the top. At the bottom is Charlie. We're waiting to fill that center square, folks. Waiting to fill the center square. Hello, Vernon. How are you? I apologize for calling a little early while ago. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. that that would interrupt things. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's my fault. I, sometimes I say, "Well, I can, I can open it up because they can't see that I'm on." But somehow they can see I'm on. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, they, they don't have to see I'm on. All they have to do is just try. And uh, hello there, Phil. How are you? All they have all to, right. All they have to do is try. And it rings. That's the thing I don't like about the new Skype as well. I'm yeah. not. If you say you're invisible, it's just people see that you're not on. But you you can still call them. And it should be when it says invisible that you know it's do not disturb. It's uh, you know and and uh, so I don't blame you. I blame those fuckers over at Skype who can't think. Tw you know they they I don't think they use their own program is what the problem is. Oh. You know. So, why, anyway. why do you open up the Skype lines before you're ready? I didn't open them, Phil. Didn't you just hear me? Well, you were green. No, I wasn't. I was green yeah. now, but I wasn't green when Vernon tried to call me. Yeah. Oh, oh. And no, yet, I wasn't green. And yeah. yet, if, if somebody tries to call me, it'll ring. Now, shouldn't it, if I'm invisible, not ring? Hmm. Next time I'll call put... Phil. I was just trying to set up my camera. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's not your fault, Vernon. It's the fault of Skype. And I mean, you know, how many times do I have to write him another note about how fucked up their program is? When it says invisible, it should be that nobody can call you. You know, but they can. And I can call you. I don't even have to go online. Everybody can call me anyway. So, I don't care. 347 352 0079. Well, that's the phone number. <laughs> we prefer you not use the phone because, uh, well, I mean, I pay for it every month, so you may as well use it. But uh, uh, here comes Jeff Stein. Let's see here. Put Jeff in there. Hot, da, 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 hot dog, hot dog. Hell, where are we? Stein is all there. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Cancel. Uh, let me um, let me see here. Come on. Yeah. Okay, and Tony Magnum too. Okay, now let me let me see here. Four, there we go. And I want to go Stein Zeller. There we go. And uh, we'll put Tony in the five slot. Uh, Tony Quisp. There he is. There we go. Okay. Um, let me see here. I got. I, oh, I see. Wait a minute. Number four. What? what why didn't Why didn't Stein get it? Come on, oh, hey, Vernon. I want Stein Zeller. There we go. Okay, there we go on that, and then we'll just uh, make sure that. Let me see here. Oh God, hold on a second. My my stuff is freezing. There we go. Here we go. There we go. All right. Now I transition it. There we go. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hey, welcome uh, back. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean the fact is that if you're if you have yourself invisible, people can still call you, and that that shouldn't be, you know. 
Um, and I, so I can't really open, uh, you know, even open Skype until I'm ready, you know, because somebody might try and call. Because you aren't the first one that's tried that, Vernon. Somebody else tried it once, too. And I, then I figured, well, how many people are going to try? You know, they see I'm invisible. They're not going to call, right? They're waiting for that green light to go on. But some people don't. They, you know. But, you know, eh, fuck Skype. <laughs> hey, did you yep. get your? I just uh, had, like I said, I'm just trying to set up my camera. So next time I'll call Phil. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> You're welcome to call me anytime. Yeah. What were you going to say, uh, hey, Phil? Oh, oh, oh um, uh, the. Uh, did you get your neuropathy ball? Yes. For your, how do you like huh? it? Well, it's the same. You know, it's like it looks almost like the golf ball. You know. Yeah. It's just the difference in price. The other well, one I don't free. know. When you apply pressure, uh, it'll it feels pretty good. Yeah, uh, so yeah. does. Have you tried a golf ball? No. Yeah, well, it works just as well. Yeah, well, Trump's got them all. Mm -hmm. Got all the golf balls. Mm -hmm. There are none left for anyone else. Yeah, yeah. Mine say Mar-a-Lago on there, so I like crunching them. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, did you go anywhere for uh, the holiday? <laughs> no. Or did you stay? No. 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 Went to a Broadway show. Oh, what did you see? Mean Girls. Any good? Terrible. It was bad? Uh -huh. Terrible. Oh, oh shit. Ghastly. Good, no? Ghastly. Did you want to walk out or no? Well, if I wasn't taken there by some friends. Oh, OK. Uh, you would have. If you were by yourself, you would have. I, I may have walked, yeah. Yeah, I probably would do that too far yeah. myself. But then again, right, then again, if I had paid one hundred and thirty, one hundred forty dollars for tickets, I don't know if I would have walked. You know? That's yeah. true. You want to see to the that's end. That's the thing that what? keeps you. That's the thing that keeps you there. Unfortunately. Is it a musical or? Uh... Yeah, it's a musical. Uh, uh, it's Tina Fey wrote it. You know, it was taken oh. from the screenplay, which uh, yeah. is you know much better than uh, uh, than the than the uh, play is. Uh, hmm. And it was it was pretty terrible, you know. I I was not uh, I was not that happy with it. Hello, Dan. How are you? Uh, I was not that Hello, happy. With it. I thought the the music was none of it was memorable. Uh, it was uh, the lyrics were almost incomprehensible. Mm -hmm. um, the, sc the script was uh, not funny like I thought it would be. I mean, I expected it to be better. You know, yeah. I I went in saying, hey, this could be very good, because I like the movie, and I like Tina Fey's work. But her husband wrote the music, and he's kind of mediocre. And uh, it just, you know, but the place was packed, and it's packed with teenage girls. Wow. You know. For 140 a ticket? 140, 150. Although I looked up at the, the thing going out, and there's some price there, and I don't know what it's for, $455. Mm -hmm. What is wow. that for? Do you know? Uh, um, it's probably a meet and greet. That's what some of the shows just cost that much. Wow. You don't think it's a VIP seat with, uh, you know, meet and greet uh, either well, before or after? Be $500. Often Pam was trying to get some ticket and they said, yeah, there's a ticket available on such and such a day, $500. How much was Hamilton? Well, Hamilton. Well, Hamil it, it, Hamilton was like a couple hundred bucks, but it, but the only way you could get it was from scalpers, and they were going for fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a seat. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to see anything that well. <clears throat> you, you know, I you know I, I don't know. <laughs> there used to be a, a spot where you could pay, but you had a stand. I don't think they allow them. No, anymore. they have a, a we what oh, we what we got yeah. for to kill a mockingbird because Marjorie was told they were okay were what they call obstructed view seats. Oh yeah. So I was sitting there looking at some musician's ass for most of the show. <laughs> you were up close. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, well, first row. Yeah. Or second row, I can't remember. You know, but uh, these tickets. Uh, uh, Buddy and his wife got them for us, for me. Marjorie didn't go. Um, and uh, they were like 85 bucks a piece because they got them at that uh, tickets, take TKTS. 
and it's, yeah. and if you buy those on the day of the show, uh, you can get some pretty good bargains, you know. So, yeah. but it was no. it was a mediocre show. I, I I and I hated the fact that it was mediocre because I I really wanted to like it, you know. Yeah, I, I may do uh, a show uh, in about two weeks. Ray Renati is doing love letters for two nights, and uh, I might go. Yeah, well, that's one of the biggest rip-off shows of all time. Love letters? Yeah, two people stand there and read stuff. Mm. You know, it, it, and what would happen is they would bring it into a town, and they say, okay, we've got this star and this star and love letters. And they would just sit there reading letters. They didn't even have to memorize their parts. Mm. <laughs> you know, so it was kind of a phony show. Yeah. You know, and in that this respect. is said I, by I the mean, guy that I, didn't like. Huh? This is said by the guy that didn't like Starlight Express. I hated Starlight Express. <laughs> I liked it. I mean, nobody can do it a, like a steam train. A show on roller skates? Come on! Are you yeah, kidding me? Pretty, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. I I saw the biggest uh, uh, in one week here in New York. Yeah. There were two shows that went belly up, and both of them were what? both of them were the most expensive shows ever mounted on Broadway, and they both went belly up in their first week. Well, one of them was, call, one them was called week. Dude. It was, oh. it was done by Ragno and what's his name who did uh, did hair, and so everybody oh, was willing yeah. to invest in that. And what they, they did is it was done in the Ed's, what is now the Ed Sullivan Theater, yeah. and, and they just gutted the place, and then they replaced it with like stools or something or benches and <clears throat> and dirt in the middle of the theater, and that thing just absolutely cr crashed and burned okay uh, okay uh, wait a minute okay wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, wait, mr wait, ray wait a minute okay I, I couldn't let that go wait a minute ray <laughs> ray i gotta i gotta i'm sorry i, wait a minute, I gotta put that, your this, i just I, I gotta put your I, picture up first ray okay i, 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 I crash you got no bike lanes up there huh <laughs> Uh, it's worth it. It's worth it's worth risking death for this. For this? Because uh. I, I, I heard that, that. I'm doing a phony show. I'm doing a <laughs> well, it's not it's not like you're going in and having to actually rehearse the thing and memorize lines, right? No, wait a second. No, you're right. Okay, so um, here's the deal. I, we're not memorizing it because A.R. Gurney said absolutely do not memorize this. However, we basically have it memorized. And we rehearsed it a whole bunch, whereas the stars who went in and did it on Broadway probably rehearsed once before they went in front of the audience. Mm -hmm. We've rehearsed many times. Yeah, but it's a lazy uh, show. You don't have to memorize anything. You don't have to put costumes on. No, nobody, you're right. No, and that's, nobody has to in build that sense, sets. You're right, but it's, yeah. it's the writing. It's the writing and it's the what you, the, and what you put on. Have you seen vagina monologues? No, but I've talked that's to a, I've talked to many of vagina in my time. So <laughs> that's a red play also, and it's fantastic. Um, okay, yeah. and I've also done a play that was supposed to be red, and I memorized it called "The Guys." It was about 9/11. Mm -hmm. It's more work, of course, uh, but I just I just want to give it like a balanced. I just wanted to get keep this fair and balanced. Well, no, I just I'm ha listen. I'm very happy that you're doing a show, and I'm sure if you do it, somebody it'll be, asked me to do it, and it, I said, sure, I'll do it. That it'll be yeah. terrific uh, with you in it, yeah. but it's still a yeah. lazy fucking show. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. It's not. It's not. I agree. It's a lot easier than any other play I've done. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> because you I have the words the, right there in front of me. Well, the idea was, see, the idea behind it was is they could bring in, like, famous actors to just come in for one or two nights and that's, just read this thing. That's right. You know? Yeah. So. And, 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 and the, um, you know, for the rights, when you get the rights to the play, I, I mean, probably no one would check on us. But it's in there that you sign a contract that it will not be memorized, that it will be read. Oh, really? It's crazy. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that. Wow. He he even stipulates how it has to be staged, wow. how people have to walk in on the stage and leave the stage, and you have to do yeah. it contractually. It's kind of absurd. Yeah. 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 If you don't do it exactly. Well, well fuck him. Huh? But it's a good, it's good, really <laughs> good writing. Really <laughs> yeah. Anyway. How can you that up? You got to tell huh? me how to read. 
So you just got to tell you how to read the letter in his play? Like, no, no, no. You read it how you want. Although he said no crying. That's all he said. No tell crying me, allowed. Cry if it wasn't so bad. <laughs> no, the, the re, the, it's written really well. I mean. Oh, it is? Okay. Oh, yeah. The writing is great. Um, oh, man. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it is weird. Alex is right. What, it's, uh, yeah. What, what, what other shows has this guy done? A show where you read the telephone directory? Oh, no, no. <laughs> all his <laughs> other plays are. No, A.R. Gurney wrote uh, The Dining <laughs> Room. Uh, uh, Sylvia, a bunch of super, there were huge hits on Broadway. Regular mm -hmm. plays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just read but then letters and that's a hit. Huh? All you, you do, well, all you do is just read letters, which is like a relationship type thing. In the yeah, place? yeah. 50 years of letters. Yeah. I'm guessing they die at the end. Uh, well, I don't want Phil, Phil might go. I don't want to screw well, things up. I mean, come on. How much longer can you live? Toilet. Are one person gonna... dies. One person. Di one of them dies. What I've heard about this show, the show dies in the first act. So you know. Uh, yeah, it's true. The second act is way better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's yeah. true. The yeah. second act. Is... Now everything you're saying is right. It's just you kind of put a, a negative slant on it. I just wanted to give like. Well, I, you, had to why. you had to defend the honor of the work you're doing. Yeah, 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 and I agree. I mean, this is the easiest play I have ever done. That's for sure. Yeah. Because I don't have to memorize a damn thing. Right. I've had to memorize 80 pages of dialogue before. Am I glad I'm not this time? In fact, yeah, because in fact, we're only going on for two nights. Can I be your understudy? <laughs> sure. Okay. okay, great. I'm, I'm ready to go. Just All right. Let me know. We'll I'll, 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 be, I'll be your understudy. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to memorize any lines. No. And, and the guy doesn't even want you to read it ahead of time. Uh, no, he does. He does. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right. It was a star vehicle. You're right. Yeah. I mean, totally. I think it was built. Uh, I can't remember. Who I think did the it first. other show yeah. that I hated for some reason was Tony and Tina's wedding. Oh, that oh, sucks. My mother liked that shit. Oh, that thing sucks. Oh, yeah. She likes stupid. Those yeah. What? That what went on in San Francisco for years. Yeah, they they get the they get the audience to participate. Yeah, that's yeah. even that's even la that's even lazier than what he's doing because the <laughs> actors just have other people do the work for them. So, okay, I'm gonna hang up so I don't get in an accident. The audience. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Bye. 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 Keep listening. Okay. Let me see here. Let me go back to. Uh, there we go. Uh, we got rid of him. Yes, Dan. Uh, he, he just reminded me of something I heard about today. Patrick might be interested. Disney is opening this um, Star Wars hotel, but it's all enclosed, and it's like you're on a space mission, and you're there for two days, three days and two nights, and it's all they do a story in front of you. And the whole, it's like one of those uh, story cruises or something. Sounds like Tony like, and Tina's wedding. Right, exactly. <laughs> but it goes on for two or three days, and it's all Star Wars stuff. So, and it's, and it's I hear it's like $3,000 to get in. Ooh. So, it's, maybe Patrick might like it, but yeah, I don't he'll, know. He'll, he'll be going tomorrow. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't, I just heard about it. I was like, man, I like Star Wars, but. You know, even I have my limits. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, uh, but no, I'm and I'm really tired today. I, I, my, I, I it, you know, it's allergy time. I don't know. The allergies came out yesterday, and my eyes were burning. Oh, it's just terrible. Uh, and uh, so I, I'm trying to survive that. You know, my neuropathy is killing me. It's, 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 it's good. Life is good. Life is working out just fine. Yes. Glad to hear it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, tonight I had a fight with Marjorie. Oh, what happened? Oh, what happened? Oh, what happened? It's not. It's not divorce yet, Tony. So. Yeah. Oh, that's. Good. You won't we'll have. To, you won't have to figure out which parent to favor. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I. Uh, no, she got mad at me because I asked her something about uh, maybe going to a chiropractor to just see if he could do something about the back right mm -hmm. uh and uh she started talking to me and i realized i left my soda in the other room so while she was talking and i could still hear her i went to go get my soda and she got mad at me you blame her <laughs> oh, well oh. well i told her that i can hear you 
fine because I'm used to on radio talking to people on the phone and so therefore I don't need eye contact with somebody to know what's going on or to hear them or to communicate with them. And I was just going because I knew I was very thirsty and I needed to get something. She just wouldn't she just gave me the worst time. You know. You're supposed to excuse yourself first. Really? I was coming back. Well, then you say hi, I'm back. But you know, before you leave in the middle of a conversation, you say, yeah. uh, "Pardon me, would you mind if I run into well, the kitchen for a minute?" Well, my soda was in the other room, and I re realized it, and I had to go get it. Yeah. Are you, are you, are you just abandoning her? Yeah. yeah. Well, See, I'm... if you would have bought the rubs, you wouldn't need the <laughs> chiropractor. <laughs> Hold on a second. Show me your rubs, okay? <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. Does this look any different, folks? Oh, shit. Yes. It looks oh, wow. orange. And yeah. It's a different numbs. color, but does it look any different than his thing? Does it? Yeah. No, it doesn't. doesn't look it says rubs right here. <laughs> well, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, Is it made in China? And mine doesn't say anything. It has a logo right there. But yeah. that, that's the only difference between the two bowls. Yeah. That and $6. No, wow. This was six dollars. Oh, really? This was six dollars too. Yeah, this was six. Yeah. So. And uh, and it was prime, so I got it delivered for six. And then I I got a new project going. I just yeah? I just sent away for a new graphics card for my Mac Pro. Oh. That will allow it to run the new Mojave on it. Uh, and it will also probably allow me to have a backup machine that will be in many ways as strong graphically as this machine is and not use up as much CPU, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in doing video. So, you know, or GPU or yeah. CPU. I don't know. CPU, GPU, whatever. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a try. I install it. You know, I, I use the rest of my American Express points, so it's only costing me 100 bucks, and I'll, I'll give it a try. Uh, it's too bad, you know, for that machine, you didn't get that four terabyte uh, um, SSD drive. Well, oh, I, oh look what uh, look what Jeff has. Uh, oh. uh, yeah, Jeff. Yeah. What, what brand now, is this? Is what different. It's got pointy, pointy yeah. things. Yeah. Mine is um, uh, squared search. off. Huh? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any name or yeah. have a, a hole in it. Yeah. That's where they hide the drugs. And the better stuff. This. Oh, oh, I want one of those. Oh, wow. Oh, is that for the foot? Yeah. Wow. That would be a lot better than what oh, I have because wow. what happens with these things is you use them, but they kind of get away from you. That's right. Well, they can. What is the you name of that one? What, what's the name of that one? Uh, no name. Uh, Alex will buy anything. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Where is it? Oh, there we go. Foot roller. Let me see here. What's it? What are they called? Foot rollers? Maybe there's something on the side, Jeff. Or? It's not foot. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh God, I can't even type anymore. The foot massager. Here we go. The one he's got. Let's see here. Oh, those are. Oh no, this is this is not. This is not, these are all real foot massagers. I don't want that. Foot, what are they called? Foot rollers. Let's say rollers mm -hmm. and see what I get. Foot rollers. Okay. Is that for plantar fasciitis? Yeah. 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 Wait a minute. Foot. Oops. Foot. Jeff uh, is trying to break his. A massager for plantar, uh, plantar fasciitis. Okay, here we go. Here, oh, no, uh, this, oh, that's no, pretty this, interesting. No, that, that, that's not good. That's uh, another thing. Uh, oh, here, here's one kind of like what you have for 14 bucks. Okay. It's a good idea. Yeah, I'll get one tomorrow. Yeah, here's one uh, for $6. How much did you... Oh, the one you have... What's the name? It's a of rubs. What, what's rubs. the name? Of it? Rubs. What's it called? <laughs> no. What's your? He doesn't know. This one? No, the uh, other one. The green thing. Does it have a name on it? No. No. Huh? Maybe this is a prototype. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Hold on! Hold it up a second! Hold it up a second! Let me see here. 
a little higher. Well, they have one for fourteen dollars. It's green. It's not. It's not. The, it's not got gray wheels. This is kind of green. And it's, yeah. Well, I'll have to check it out oh, tomorrow. I'll, I'll find. I'll find. I'll find it tomorrow. But uh, these are, and they also have foot massagers. You can put your feet in. I could do that. You know. But uh, I used to like those. Well, they have Pliner for Shaitis socks. God, am I feeling like an old person? I need these therapeutic um, <laughs> oh, socks. For twenty dollars, you can get a Vietnamese gal that'll rub it for an hour. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're all over the place out here. Really? Foot massage. Oh, yeah. here, here it is. Now I put it down on the ground. See, then I I put a towel down, so the towel um, gets the benefit of the little nubs. Well, no. What it does is it, uh, it it hopefully can I can keep it a little more in place. Oh, from running away. Just uh, you have to yeah. apply pressure. Uh, yes, I know. With the foot. I'm doing. I'm applying pressure, right oh, now. Oh, and don't move too far. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, I'll do my other foot now. Oh, uh, no. Unless when I was using the the uh, golf ball. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not an official rubs. No, but it worked. It, it, <laughs> it solved my problem. Okay. Jeez. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so anyway, so I went to the theater, and that was what I did, and that was that's been about it. And I worked out for th three days out of the last four. Nice. Uh, pretty good. good plus, plus I added to it uh, a half a mile walk. Hey, uh, you know, I may be uh, the curse of Gabnet. Why? Well, you know, uh, the area of the Bahamas. Well, I mean, that is now... You may have been the curse of Gabnet. Yes. I've uh, got news for you. You've been the curse of Gabnet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the area of the Bahamas that is devastated yeah. now by the hurricane, yeah. that's where I was in March. Yeah. The boat Ooh. that burned in uh, yeah. off Santa Barbara yeah. and, on Santa Cruz Island. I was on three times over the last eight years. I, I, I did three trips for a total of ten nights uh, on that on, on the conception. Uh -huh. Are you going to try the fourth? Uh, not anymore. Now they have two other boats, but I'm wondering whether they're going to be in business in a week. Uh, well, they're going to have. They better lawyer up. Oh, oh yeah. And you know what? They're the nicest people. Uh, they did everything a hundred percent. I don't know what happened. Uh, although I just heard on CBS TV news mm -hmm. that they think the fire started on the second floor, and the second floor was where the salon is and the galley. And uh, But the only other thing is they said the whole crew was up at uh, 3 a.m. making breakfast. It's strange, because on the three trips, I, I get up early. Well, I get supposedly, up the way they, the accommodations are, uh, they're uh -huh. very cramped and tight and you know, down. Only the bunks. Uh, the, the accommodations are down in the front. Uh, so in the bow, you've got a center section and then bunks that are on, on the walls of the bow. And uh, kind of sounds to me like steerage in the Titanic. It, it is like steerage. <laughs> and once I, I was in the bottom bunk on one of the trips and I sat up. Yeah. Well, there isn't uh -huh. enough room to sit up. So you yeah. smack your head. You know, oh. and it was just, you know, like the middle of the night. I had to pee. I go, boom. <laughs> you know? oh. And uh, so uh, but start when everyone is asleep. Yes. Uh, oh, but I, I was saying that the crew said that they were all up preparing breakfast at 3 a.m. And I was saying that I always get up at four and I was always the first person up because I would make coffee. And then about 15, 20 minutes later, the cook would come out and start puttering around. But nobody else was up. And that's three trips, 10 nights or 10 days. And that was common. That was yeah. just that's the way they were. And so for them to all be up at 3 a.m. making mm -hmm. breakfast. I just didn't That's see. early. Yeah, something doesn't add up. Hmm. What do you think was happening, Phil? Uh, well, I thought that what happened is, you see, on these boats, they do air fills for the cylinders, and they have nitrox. Nitrox is a higher level of oxygen. So what they do is uh, they mix the two to get the higher percentage of oxygen, so you have these oxygen tanks. 
Uh, and those oxygen, tanks, oxygen what? Tanks. Oh, you're welcome. Tanks you're welcome. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I and uh, a week before, uh, someone else on Facebook said that they were having problems with their generator. And they, he, this guy was on that boat. He just you know posted something. Mm -hmm. So I assumed that maybe there was a spark from the generator that ignited an oxygen tank and it blew up. But uh, according to the uh, news tonight they're saying it started on the second floor and the second floor is just the salon the galley and the apparatus where you fill the tanks but not where the tanks are hmm. okay. tanks are actually well, lower the, than the, that. The, the good news is they were just scuba divers so uh, yeah. you know um <laughs> yeah that's, well it's that's just, good, you know, some of those people uh, i didn't know any of them uh, uh, uh although uh my friend who always books our trips uh, uh, looked on their uh, Truth Aquatics schedule, mm -hmm. and it was uh, this Kirsten Finstead. So I looked her up on Facebook, and she owns Worldwide uh, Diving Adventures, and it's a second-generation company, uh, and she's lost. She's 41. They can't find her. Uh, 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 but They haven't, uh, found, anybody. They the haven't found anybody. Uh, I mean, no, they, they, they found, found, they found uh, the bodies. All nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah but they, they haven't found anybody alive. Dude, no, no one died. 30, 34 uh, people died. Now, on our trips, the, Jason never allowed more than 15 divers because we had so much gear. With all, it was all photographers. So with all of the gear, we were limited to 15 divers, whereas this uh, Kirsten Finstad, she had 34 divers. Uh, I can't imagine. I've been on that boat three times. I cannot imagine... 34 divers on that boat. They, they were probably stepping on each Neither other. Neither can I, Phil. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, it was um, yeah. a terrible thing. By the way, a couple of pieces of really good news. Number mm -hmm. one, we hit our 800th subscriber to the YouTube channel. Ah, I knew you were around 796 the other day. and uh, Somehow we got 800. And very good. Everybody who's listening to us right now, you should tell your friends they should subscribe to the channel. Because I would love to hit a thousand. Because at a thousand, I get a lot of privileges. Yeah. Well, you can start making money then. Don't you? Yeah, I can start Do making money. Do you get a money plaque then. or something, or or some sort of medallion? No, yeah. Sergey Brin comes out and blows me. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, by the way, uh, I hate to say this, Tony, but your your lens is getting dirtier. Than it has yeah. been. It looks blurry again. You need to clean it's it. Kind of, it's kind of a little like that smoky lens effect, you know, like they well, it's did. Kind of Crisco. It's kind of the lens they put on the camera for Lucille Ball when she did her last series. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the color. Yeah. When I think when she went to it's it's with the house, yeah. the, the decor. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, uh, oh, Alyssa, I got a, I got a, a good story. Um, so I, I like this coffee, this Starbucks plus I drink in the morning. It's double the caffeine of oh, wow. normal Starbucks, <laughs> right? Really? So I decided to order some more of the, uh, dark roast. Okay. So I bought 60, uh, uh, K cups, which was about 50 bucks. All right. So I get it. What was it? Monday? Uh, no, a uh, Sunday. And I bring it up, and I open up the box, and here are all these boxes of Starbucks in there, because there are about 15 in each box. And it says Verona. It doesn't uh, say... That's a weak one. No, it doesn't say plus. I know, but the Verona is the blonde Yeah, Yeah, one. but it says, it says plus. It says it didn't say plus. It said Verona. Yeah. So I call up Apple. I mean, I call up uh, uh, Amazon. And I tell them, hey, I ordered the Plus, and you sent me the Verona. And they went, oh, well, we're sorry about that. We'll send you another. I mean, we're sending right out another one of the Plus. It's free. And keep the one you got. Mm -hmm. So I've got 60K cups of, of, the plus, of the Verona, and now I'll get 60K cups of the Plus. I'll probably never drink the Verona, but I'll drink the Plus. So now I get the next box yesterday oh no and i open it up and it says verona oh, no. 
So no. I've, I'm about ready to call them and say, you know, this is getting a little absurd. But then I pull the box out. You know, they come in these 15 K-cup boxes. I pull a box out, and on every other side it says plus. <laughs> and it does on the old one, too. And I'm thinking, how fucked up is Starbucks that only on one side of the box do they put Verona for some unknown reason, okay? Did you and order on, it directly and, from Starbucks? Yeah, no, it was ordered from Amazon. Uh, and and on every other side it said plus, but the side I saw when I opened up both times said Verona. So I got myself sixty free K cups <laughs> of plus. But what kind of what kind of packaging is that where they put the Verona on one side of it? And if they had just packaged it differently, and put uh, and packed them in the box differently, then it would have said the plus on it when I opened it. Yeah. Did, uh, do you find that it's as strong as Pete's? I mean, Pete's, you don't have to get the plus to get strong. Uh, I don't know. You know, I really Have don't. you tried it? Huh? Have you had one yet? Uh, have I had one yet? Yeah, I, I've had the plus for a while. Yeah. yeah. And I have Pete's, too. This is Pete's I'm drinking here. But, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, I just, I just kind of, uh, if it's going to be Starbucks, give me the plus. Okay? Yeah. I don't like the rest of their stuff. See, I get the Major Dickinson uh, Pete's for the store for my for my office, mm -hmm. and then everybody else gets the uh, uh, Costco brand, which is the um, uh, San Francisco Bay something or other, uh, and you get a hundred to a box for twenty nine bucks. So I I rat hole the Pete's, and then when I go to my coffee machine, I stick the Pete's K cup in. And everybody else gets Major the other Dixon's one. Major Dixon's blend <laughs> I don't like, though. I found better. Uh, yeah, there is better, but not at Costco. Big Bang is better. Big Bang is better. And then the Tierra Del something or another that I, that's what I'm drinking here. That I get, I get the ground and then I put it in a, you know, oh, you in put a it in reusable K cup. Yeah. Uh, uh, I like polluting the environment. I always get the plastic. Well, no, 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 I, but, I, but, I know that. But the, there's always. A, I, I expect that from Phil, but not from Alex. Well, there's a, no, yeah. no. I wasn't doing it because of the environment. Fuck the environment. I hate little animals, <laughs> and I don't want. I, I, I don't like the air to be clean because I like to work harder at breathing because it makes the heart race. Anyway, so you guys. Oh wait a minute. Hold. Let me finish. Sure. So, uh, uh, but but I the reason I use the the redoable K cups is I can use the ground coffee, which tastes better. It is an entirely different taste because when you have it in the K cups, you are getting a little bit of that plastic taste from it. So. And you like the plastic? I don't <laughs> like the plastic. I mean, you know. Plus, you know, have you seen have you seen any of the documentaries about the islands of plastic out in the? Yes, I have. Uh, yeah. That's why yeah. I refuse to use plastic straws. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, I, I even have my water use. in these containers. This this cap mm -hmm. is uh, plant based and biodegradable, mm -hmm. and uh, the container is also it's sort of a paper. And uh, I, I refuse to use plastic well, straws. In the mortal words of my friend David Feldman, uh, uh, all those plastics out in the ocean are biodegradable. It's just you're impatient. Yeah. <laughs> Two million years, I think, is the half-life. Huh? No, I mean, that's... Yeah. Years. I'm going no, out for the years. Three years. No, but little, oh. little animals and stuff like that eat the stuff, and they die of, you know, plastic They're poisoning. Yeah, they were talking about releasing a bacteria to uh, to, to eat those plastics. Well, they, the plastic. they, there are all kinds of ideas, but nobody seems to have come up with a good one. The yeah. circle of life. Yeah. Well, the problem is, is when you introduce something like that, there are other uh, things that uh, happen down the road that fuck up other stuff, you know, and uh, uh, yeah. Why are we dumping plastic in the ocean? We're not. The Chinese are. <clears throat> no, it's not the Chinese and medical waste. <laughs> they yeah, the Chinese. They were buying. They were taking all our garbage. Yeah, they stopped they taking it. Dump it. They stopped taking it. Yeah, because They're the oceans. Oh no, no, they, no, they were re oh. they were recycling it and they were reusing it. But they, they we just sent them so much garbage they didn't want anymore. They didn't want to be America's uh, dump. 
you know. Yeah. Uh, and so they uh, uh, they they stopped taking our our uh, you know garbage. We send the stuff to Mexico too. We do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the garbage. Well, I mean, also we can pull the wall out of the garbage. How about that? Yeah, it's recycled. Yeah. It's just a big pile of garbage. So did you hear about uh, Walmart? Yeah, no more ammo or guns. No, no, no. They're selling, they're selling guns. No, they're, you know, they're, selling they're going to sell out of it. They, uh, as soon as they're gone, there'll be no new ones. No, they Walmart. said they said they were just not selling ammo. No, yeah. uh, 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 guns and short guns, and they're also changing their policy about people bringing guns in and wearing them. Store, yeah. Well, they, no, they, they, they can conceal them. Uh, I'm not sure, but they don't want open carry. They don't want open carry. I would feel safer with open carry than I would with concealment. Well, no, because Texas is uh, the big open carry state, and, bo and both El Paso and Odessa, the open carry, the whole good guy with gun open carry thing is just out the window. Cause, yeah, you, you saw know. how well that worked. And, and, and yeah, exactly. It, it, yes, yes. Uh, the guy mistake that uh, Odessa, Texas. He really meant Odessa, Russia, and uh, okay. you know he he just didn't know where he was. They said he was mentally unstable. Oh, That's why. He, oh well, you know I I would yeah, it, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but, but a like guy a guy takes a gun and he goes around shooting up people, and uh, I don't think that's a sign of sanity. Okay, no. all right. He called the police twice. He was in a postal truck too. They said. Well, that's yeah. fair. No, he I'm stole the post. Man. He to stole the stole, stole the postal man. truck. Yeah. He wanted to be authentic. You want to be authentic. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, the mail, man. but what I heard, here's what I heard. Walgreen, Walgreen, Walmart uh, isn't selling, uh, is going to stop selling ammo, but they're not going to oh. stop selling the handguns. Now, right. uh, one of the reasons is they were holding on to selling the ammo and selling the guns and everything else until some guy walked into one of their stores with a gun and started shooting up the place. Yeah. And all of a sudden they decided, gee, we better do something about this. But what they're doing is they're, they're still selling the guns, but they're not selling the ammo. And there's something kind of wrong about that. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong here. I don't uh, think you're right. I think they're going to stop selling the the guns as well. Uh, no, that's not what I read. Eventually, but not right away because I, you know, Trump supporters, you know, they got to decide whether to boycott Walmart now. <laughs> I mean, oh my God! <laughs> you can, Trump supporters boycotting Walmart. That's uh, I can't think of a good analogy. It, here, that's but. like that's like uh, Trump uh, supporters uh, boycotting missing teeth. You know, right. uh, yeah. <laughs> and there's someone missing my tooth. By the way, I gotta, I gotta get this imp implant put in here because uh, this food is just getting stuck up there. I mean, whole lunch meals are getting stuck in the is gap. Is that six months before you can get the uh, next step? Well, no, I, uh, I can get the next step now. But here's what happened: I went in to get the implant, and she did some X-rays and said, "We got a lot of work to do first. Oh, shit. You know, it's more important than that. We better get this stuff because this could go to root canal very soon. And she did, like, four teeth in my mouth were done. And so I ate up. Here, Here's the best part. Here's the, I, I don't know if I said this the other night because I went in on Wednesday. Yeah, I went on Wednesday. Well, I didn't mention it, I don't think. But she has been working at using up my insurance money, you know, so she says, "Let's not leave. Let's leave as little on the table as we can possibly leave." So I go and I get this uh, this crown put in, and then she says, "Let's look at what's left." And she goes to her person who does that work and says, "Okay, how much does he have left?" She says, "Well, if we do a cleaning, and you do that other small cavity he's got, and he's got three hundred dollars left, that will come." for the insurance company to $299, leaving $1. <laughs> so I've, I've, I've used up every penny of my insurance money. I'm so, so happy. She, 
So what she does is she fleeces you for everything you got, <laughs> and then next year she starts all over again. No, next yep. year we do the implant, and they will pay $1,600 on the implant, and I will pay $1,600 on the implant. No, normally I would say, hey, if, if it's a $5,000 implant, which it used to be for me, uh, I won't, you know, I guess I'll go along both with a missing tooth and vote for Trump next time. Uh, but uh, uh, I figured 1600 eh, I can make that, you know. Uh, it, it brings the price down sufficiently for me. So, um, so I'm going to, you know, the first of the year we're going to do the, uh, we're going to do the implant. And that, that, can be, that can be done right now because it's been over three months since this thing's had time to settle. Then they put uh -huh. the implant in, then it has to wait three months, and then they put the crown on it, and you're good to go, you know. And then I'll die. Yeah. You know, having, you, having used dentists all that. Clean up. They it's put crazy. a crown on the implant? Yeah. Why would they do that? So you so have a tooth a there, tooth. Phil. The implant's the tooth. No, the implant's no, just the a piece of metal. Oh, no. no uh, the metal is the stud, and then no. there's uh, uh, a, um, a a material that they uh, use in a, in a special uh, laser kind of thing. And it cuts the tooth to exactly the way it should be, and then it's inserted on the uh, post. Yes, but yes, that's exactly what you do. But the implant is a post. Yeah. And then they put some little extra added thing on the post once uh, they're getting it ready to do the. Uh, and then they put a essentially what is a crown in there. Yeah, well, yeah kind of. Yeah. It, it, the whole thing is is the crown. And they take this material, and when they put it in a special kind of oven, uh, it, it the material turns to a different kind of material that they can. I don't. I don't know what that is, but what I do is get a crown. I've had it yeah. done before. They send out, and the company makes a crown that is specially made to fit on an implant post. Yeah, it's all part of a system. Uh, my, I had a friend that worked it's for no a company called... It's no system. Called... It's basically what they're doing is they're sticking a piece of metal in your jaw that the tooth is going to stick onto, and then just like even if you had a root canal, they would put a post in there. This kind yeah. of is the post, only it's a different kind of post because they've screwed it into your jaw. Yeah, I had a buddy that worked for a company called Ivaclar Vivident, and they made the machines and the crown thing you're talking about. Uh, that, that's what they made and sold. Mm. And the oven that would change its molecular structure. Yeah. Yeah. But I had a girlfriend who used to deliver those. Uh, she was in college and she had needed a job and she delivered those things to dentists. They and come with pepperoni? It, no, crowns. The <laughs> crowns. And so she said, do you know how much a crown costs? And I said, no, tell me. She says, Half of whatever your dentist is charging you for it. Do you know that? Thing In other words, they, they charge for it, and then the dentist ups the charge 100%. In other words, if it's a three, if it costs them 500 bucks to make, the crown is $1,000 when your dentist puts it on. That thing that goes on the post before they carve it into the tooth or you know the cap, as you call it, crown. Uh, costs 35 bucks. That's what the dentist pays for it before before it's formed into the into the no, crown. What, what, what she told me was that if you paid a thousand dollars for your crown, mm -hmm. it costs the dentist five hundred. So the dentist to, is to really. The the, but I'm I'm talking about the little piece of material that they use to fashion the thing that's going to go on your post. I don't know what you're talking about. They, they of course make I know a, what I'm talking about. They make about. a crown, Phil. It's called a crown. It's a fake tooth. Uh, yeah, but it's made out of certain no, kind of material. No, it's, it's made out of, actually, it has a gold base, if it's a good one, and then it has a porcelain veneer. Oh, so you're not even getting the real implant. You, you, no, or, oh, you know, I'm not talking thing. about an implant. I'm talking about crowns, Phil. Yeah. Well, you got no tooth. How can you get a crown? I'm you not talking. On top of a tooth. I'm talking about this girlfriend who used to deliver crowns to dentists. How many here have a crown in their mouth? Jeff, you got to have one, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think. I, yeah, yeah. I have one. Yeah. yeah, but it's on top of an existing tooth. They just kind of. In top of an existing tooth, or if you've had a root canal, they grind mm -hmm. the tooth down and right. they have a post in it, and then the crown sticks onto the post. Okay? Uh. There are two ways that a crown can work. 
So anyway, they, 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 that was, uh, you know, she just said that, you know, the dentist makes, uh, a, a charges you for the crown. You know, so they're reselling a crown to you. Well, that's that, their business. They well, no, that's why, that's why I felt it would be great if we were allowed to uh, do, uh, 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 do uh, what do you call it? Um, Unlimited uh, free dentistry? Well, no, if you could go to a store or a storefront. That's called like, you know, Teeth or Us or something like that, Crown for <laughs> Us. And you could buy your crown from another party. And then that could be a very competitive business so that you could get it for a lot cheaper than you get it from your dentist. Yeah, but try to get it fit on. I mean, if somebody comes to me and says, well, I bought my carpet from so-and-so, can you install it? No. No, <laughs> but if, if these places have the ability to, to take a mold and to make a uh, thing for your tooth, right mm -hmm. they can then make you a tooth and then they can charge you less than a dentist would charge you for it if that were allowed but it's not allowed yeah these um i would uh, like these to... uh ear, these things they're earplugs uh i make them the same way and they go to a lab uh that that makes them the same way that the dentist would make a uh no, a tooth no we're not no it's not it's yeah different. I, it's yeah, different I it's much more technical I, I squirt it into the all, ear. All I'm saying I make is, an impression. I, you don't get what I'm saying, Phil. I'm just saying it should be. We could have it be a very competitive business, because there's nothing special about you know all your dentist does once they've done whatever they had to do to the tooth. Okay, is is uh, they make a mold for the crown and they send it off to somebody who makes the crown. If you could have a company that you go to to make the crown, what are you, what are you giving me? No, Dan. Do you Dan's think gone. I, Dan left. What happened to Dan? Uh, uh, he got scared away by the wallpaper. He suddenly we lost him. <laughs> oh, look! I, I just... think he was trying to do something, and uh, he yeah. may have touched the wrong button. Yeah, oh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How you How you doing there, uh, Vernon? How was your weekend? Actually, I was sick most of the weekend. Really? What? Some you... kind of yeah, some kind of uh, respiratory infection going around our city oh wow happy holiday happy holiday yeah yeah wow <laughs> i was hanging out with communists you were hanging out with communists yeah what do you mean the ilwu uh union international and workers Glover. of the world huh the international what? workers of the world yeah they're yeah. uh the uh, guys who unload the containers yeah and uh so anyway they don't want the oakland uh uh, A's to move their Wait a minute, the ILWU is the International Longshoremen Workers Union. Yeah, that's what they are, the Longshoremen. Oh, well, that's not, that's, that's not the uh, Workers of the World. That's I don't the, know the difference. I don't like unions the anyway. Workers of the World are called the Wobblies. Oh, mm -hmm. well, the, this is the Longshoremen. And so they put on this um, uh, public gathering, and they had Danny Glover there as their keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Basically, all of these guys are uh, straight-up commies. They don't like charter schools, that's for sure. But uh, they don't want the A's. I don't like charter schools, so does that make me, me a commie? Yes. I, uh, I, I uh, hate charter schools <laughs> as well. Does that make me a commie? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Charter yes, schools scoop, have not proven question. to be any more effective than public schools. Actually, less effective because they're not, yeah. uh, they don't have the, um, uh, the uh, uh, oversight. oversight. That that uh, that the regular schools have. You mean the ton of administrative people yeah, that are yes, examining yes, all the money? Yes, yes the stuff uh, that so makes sure that there's a, don't get paid anything. Uh, 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 that uh, to make sure that the kids are being taught. Okay. Charter schools pay teachers worse than the public schools. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, do they have as much administration as the public schools? You know, these administrators, they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars well, no, because, a year. Because a charter the school, no, because a charter school does it on the cheap so they can make a profit. Yeah. yeah. How come Jerry Brown was so in favor of charter schools when he was the mayor of Oakland? And, he, you know, he's one of your types. Well, I don't think that he was for it as much as he was oh, for yeah. for adding it to the mixture, mm. you know, to making them available. Uh, but that that you know, I mean, the fact is that if in any way charter schools impinge upon 
the money and and everything that a uh, uh, that a uh, regular school gets, then I say it's wrong. And the point is, is that's what exactly what's happening. That uh, p- public schools are being hurt by the charter schools who are doing it more on the cheap, you know. And uh, I just think that the public schools. Hey, I'm I'm a product of the public school system. So are you, Phil? I we yeah, didn't do too badly. Too. Yes. Uh, I think uh, first uh, Phil had his hand up, and then Vernon. Yeah. Well, um, now I forgot. Okay, <laughs> Vernon, <laughs> take it. Uh, I'm, I'm a product of the public school system too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I got a t- master's degree in electrical engineering, and uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm not on the public dole except for what I paid into Social Security. Yeah. Yeah. That's not dole. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, I, I was the part of the class that made the top half possible the, the bottom yeah, half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. It helped the curve. Mm. But, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I just, uh, I feel that, yes, I think um, charter schools probably should be allowed to exist, but not where they uh, gut the public school system. And that's what they're starting to do in a lot of states. I remember what it is. California spends, I believe, more per student uh, than any other school system in the nation. And, but we're like 47th in the nation for uh, uh, results. Is throwing more money at these public schools uh, a good idea when you look at the results that, uh, that they get? What results? What's wrong with the results they get? We're at the bottom of the stack in california is very very uh, low but, but in, the, the charter schools don't produce much better uh well jerry brown's charter school was you couldn't be late you had to wear a uniform uh they uh only let so many students in and uh I, I, it it was a big success i believe uh jerry yeah, but the, he did it at a time that was back during the experimentation era exactly charter school, before exactly. they learned how bad they really are well, the problem well, with them is the problem with them is is there's, there's not the oversight, you know, and so that anybody can open a charter school, yeah. basically. And I don't know that I want anybody teaching my kids. Bennett's charter school for the uh, furthering of radio and announcing. I can't remember <laughs> who had a charter school, but it was somebody that I, you know, I wouldn't want to be have have his people teaching my kids. Was that Columbia? No, I can't remember now. Uh, but school of broadcasting. Uh, no, no, that was a charter school. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, I mean, I just uh, you know, I, I just find that it's uh, the whole idea of charter schools uh, is not good. It, it hasn't proved to be. If they proved that they were better schools and that it was, people were getting a better education and so on, but that isn't the case. Uh, they're they're getting a worse education in many cases, and there isn't the oversight that a public school has. And you know, a public school teacher has to have a uh, a um, certification. A, has to have a master's degree. Has to have yeah. a master's degree. Well, they don't have to have a. No, master's yes, they do. They need they do. more if they get a master's. Yes, they do. They absolutely My do. Go back, back, Alex. She's got five years. She went back to teaching. She can. She needs to get her master's completed within another three or four years. Mm-hmm. And you can only teach with a man. She can't teach high school, uh, Phil. No. So she has. They give you a win. No, because you need a master's for high school. Really? She's teaching elementary. She's in uh, first right. grade this year. That's right. She's and, for and, her master's. And, 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 and I, yet you don't have to have a degree in anything to be a teacher in a charter school, I don't think. I, I thought in my school you had to act like Caligula to get uh, to be a teacher in that school and then uh, you know beat the students until they gave up no, that's uh, the Catholic schools well, you know and I, I graduated in 72 and uh, they they used to do things differently I remember in grade school the t- the principal had a paddle hanging on his wall and he used it Luckily, not on me. I only had to sit there. <laughs> well, yeah, but what I, all I'm saying is, is that the, the, the teachers in public schools, the credentials are far more rigid, and the requirements are far more rigid. Now, Dan is a teacher. Oh, yeah, are Dan. you telling me well, what, what, yeah. that if Dan Myers could teach, 
Is, is Dan? Rigid? Dan's not back again, is he? He's still frozen. No, what happened to Dan? Well, let me see here. Hey, you know the YouTube is frozen. The YouTube is, is frozen. No, I it's not. Dan was a teacher. I wonder what grade he teaches. Did he teach social studies? No, it, Dan. It, actually, it's not frozen. Oh, no, no, not a. Just try uh, refreshing it. We should quiz in blank polo. See if we know who it is. Yeah. <laughs> We used to drive our substitute teachers crazy. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I found that it got hung up a couple of times tonight. Uh, they may be having some problems over there at YouTube. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, I mean, uh, I, you know, um, I think that it's uh, uh, that we can't. Uh, the, the thing about the what do you call it schools, the, the charter schools, uh, they, they suck. But anyway, go ahead with your IW. You're in your set. <laughs> oh, well, uh, it was a very interesting time. Uh, uh, we know uh, John Perulis did the live streaming, and I took the uh, still photos. And uh, it was, uh, you know, I got some good shots. I was able to get up on the stage, behind the stage. Uh, and what are you right shooting? The, a bunch of longshoremen, for Christ's sake. Well, I was shooting longshoremen, <laughs> but I was also shooting Danny Glover. Uh, well, you can come to my apartment house. You can shoot Danny Glover. I, yeah, that's he. He lives in your apartment, but he also lives in San Francisco. He has an apartment in, in this building. Oh, wow! Yeah. Uh, I didn't know. Yeah, uh, I've never see. seen him. But so does Diana Ross's daughter, and I've never seen her either. So. Yeah. Let's go. Let's see if. Uh, oh, and I I put in my new um, uh, Linksys, uh, whatever it is. Uh, uh, next. Oh, the router. The router. Uh, it went up to 200 down and 30 or 40 up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which is, uh, you know, a lot faster because the old Apple one only went to 100. And it was really giving me like 50. Oh, the new ones have a lot of power. You know. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's see. I can't. Uh, oh, there we go. Let's, here's a, a, a Danny Glover shot. Yeah, okay. That's what Danny Glover looks like, right? Okay. Yeah. It's not like shooting whales, is it? No. <laughs> okay. no. It's not I, like I shooting sharks. Yeah. Sharks. Sharks yeah. I like shooting. Yeah. Yeah. What I love about the news in the last couple of days, well, what I hate about the news the last couple of days, and what I also love about it is, what I hate about it is, it's all hurricane all the time. You know, it's like yeah, and the hurricane is is uh, it, it's within inches of the Bahamas, you know, and oh, it, may, it hit the Bahamas. Yeah. yeah then it may. Oh, yeah. Miss, yeah. Then it may miss uh, 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 the United States. What I'm sorry about is it missed Miami. I would like to see Miami just completely decimated. I would like to see it wiped off the face. Of, huh? Yeah. 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 Right on the golf course, blow the what did you say about Mar-a-Lago? Yeah, it was supposed to hit at uh, West uh, West Palm Beach. That area was uh, was where it was going to hit. Uh, you know, when did you get hurt? Maybe it's hopeful. Well, it did. It did. And uh, sadly, they evacuated Mar-a-Lago. Oh, yeah. Then it could fall down. Well, they, and they <laughs> should never to... let anybody back in again. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah, like the Wizard of Oz. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Jeff, he's muted. Oh, oh turn your mic on. I mean, uh, here yeah, I am. Yeah. Why don't you like Miami? Jews. <laughs> I, no. I lived there for a very short time. Two weeks. It was the heat, wasn't it? No, I, I was, was there. Three no, months. That was three months. Yeah. You know, well. give, give me my due. It was three months. You know. Okay. What part of Miami did you live in? Huh? What part of Miami did Coconut you live in? Like Grove. Coral Gables? Co or? Coconut Grove. Coconut Grove, that's a nice area. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Try it on a Saturday night. You can't get out your front fucking door. Well, and if you want to come Salido. home, you can't come home till 3 in the morning when everybody leaves and quits partying. Well, you remember I lived on the uh, side of Sausalito that was downtown, and you were on the more on the uh, north side. And, uh, you know, I had all of those problems getting down Bridgeway and all, all the traffic. Yeah, People well, I mean, but, uh, but I, I, uh, I absolutely hate it. Miami, Miami, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Didn't like the Cuban food and you know the the Spanish kind of flavor to no. the place. No, mm -mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I, I hated Miami. You uh, did hate. So if it if it uh, like the only the only I won't live long enough to see it, but with global warming and the fact that as the ice caps melt, the water rises, uh, there will be no Miami in about another 50 to 75 years. And I'm so happy with that prospect. That's why Trump wants to buy Greenland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the new Miami. It, it, it could be. It could be. I mean, he sees it the could be. Greenland's right on top. Listen, I don't want I, 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 none of us are going to be around for the what's going to happen to this planet if we don't start doing something about it soon. I mean, this Hoping is... For the dinosaurs to come back. I'd love to see the dinosaurs. You'd love to see the dinosaurs? Just come one back. dinosaur right down my street, just to know that it exactly existed. Yeah. His pajamas have dinosaurs. That they actually lived. That, is, that still boggles my mind when you see them in a museum. Like, how is that possible? What? It's almost like you couldn't believe like they actually roamed the earth. I find that fascinating. I filled my car up with dinosaurs today. Yeah. 16 gallons. Hmm. A T-Rex? I mean, that's kind of wild if you think about it. That they actually like Godzilla walked off planet. I mean, I find no, they amazing. weren't Godzilla, and they weren't. I know. always think of Godzilla when I see a T Rex. Like, oh man, it's like he actually was here. What, what I always loved were the old movies where the cavemen lived at the same time the dinosaurs were running around, and that Can never that nice? never existed. Oh, it never did because in Land of the Lost, they used to hide in a cave all the time. Remember that old? They, 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 they oh, he's never. Coming. They run. never existed. Oh, okay. Oh. However, look at a, however, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals did exist at the same time. And, and uh, the uh, fucking Homo sapiens were the ruin of the Neanderthals. Because the problem the Neanderthals had is they weren't social. They had no social media. They weren't social. <laughs> and because they no were... No Facebook? They literally were pushed to the ocean and and yeah. and went to extinct into an ex into extinction, and the Homo sapiens took over. But the Homo sapiens were here at the same time that the Neanderthals were in Europe. So, just thought I'd pass that information along. Not that anybody can use it, you know. Okay, well that uh, that brought this to a grinding <laughs> halt. Um. So what else is in the news? Anything else? I in guess the news? Uh, Omar is now having a, uh, a uh, an affair with her manager. So you know, the the more okay. I look at her, you know, I maybe want some of that hot Somali, you know, action. Somali. Yeah, uh, Alien Omar is Somali. Oh, Alien Omar, you're talking about Omar. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, she's getting a divorce from her husband. Uh, the first, uh, second husband was her brother. But now she's divorcing the first one, and uh, she's taken up with her married manager. So yeah, I think she's uh, she's out there. Why why does this matter, Phil? Yeah, who gives a it's fuck? Who gives I a like fuck? gossip. Who, who, yeah, like, you like gossip when it's about him, about her. No, but you don't like gossip when it's about Trump, a man who would fuck anything that moved, well, and not ask permission he, first. Some hot Trump action. I'm talking about hot Somali action. You know? Believe me, if I was going to fuck anybody, it would be her over him. Well, she's not bad looking. The more I look at her, you know, the, the more attractive she is. Oh, she, she's a very, very attractive woman. Yeah. But you yeah. got to admit, uh, what's her name? Uh, Ocasio uh, Cortez. Gabbard? No, Ocasio Cortez. Uh, yeah, she's it, attractive. It is, yeah, pretty, she's hot. is pretty hot stuff. Yeah. Am I being sexist here? Am I being... Yes. Will the Me Too people write about me and say, how can he... If they listen. <laughs> Let me add that she's also very accomplished. Yeah. But she's also very hot. And one of the things that makes her hot to me is that she's accomplished. Yeah. Okay? How's that? Did I just, wore, did I just save myself? Yeah, I think, I think that helped. Oh, what okay. is she accomplished <laughs> What? What is she I accomplished in? What's she accomplished in? I think she's very well read. I think she's very well spoken. I think well, before she goes, she, go, she does she does something that your boy doesn't do. Before she goes into some kind of hearing or whatever, she does a great deal of reading on the subject matter before she goes in, so she knows what the questions are that you should ask. Oh, 
So she doesn't like taking them off the cuff like Trump does, being transparent. Oh, yeah. Well, he's a great ad lib artist, yeah. isn't he? Never gets yeah. himself into mm -hmm. any trouble. Always says no. all the right stuff, you know. Yeah. 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 Uh, he's like guys from Queens. Yeah. I wonder if you push him enough to computer. You know, yeah, you know what's funny is they're talking about Biden all the time and they talk about how well, you know, all his gaffes. But for all his gaffes, none of them have been any anything that was dangerous to anybody or nope. caused anybody any problems. You know, they were just gaffes. Is that, is that why they don't want him out in public? What? Uh, his handlers? <laughs> Does you know, they, they they don't want him making public appearances, and they want to keep him on well, uh, how the do you, wait, monitor. Wait, 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 that's bullshit, Phil, because how the fuck do you run for president and not make public appearances? I understand, and that's, you know, I, I don't think Biden's got, uh, you know, he might be the front runner now, but I think somebody else is either going to come into it or somebody else is going to emerge. Well, whoever is going to be in it, or whoever's going to emerge has to be there already because it's getting a, too, a little bit too late yeah. in, in this day and age to enter the race. Would you agree, oh, Charlie? I'd vote for oh, a no. Buick over Trump. What did you yeah. say? What did you say, Vernon? I'd vote for a Buick over a Trump. Yeah. Well, yeah. some Buicks I would too. I'd vote for <laughs> a, for a used condom over Trump. Okay. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, Who's your, who are you betting on now, Charlie? Who's your latest? Uh... It hasn't changed. Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, I, you Next know. President of the United States. Y y yes, Jeff. What? You're saying so too, Jeff? Me too. You too? Warren. I don't know why, but. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I mean, <clears throat> it, what we like about Warren is she is smart. She is well-spoken. She gets her points across very well. Uh, and and I, you know, that wimpy woman could probably take uh, Trump to the woodshed in a debate. Yeah. Okay, I don't I, think she. I think she learned her lesson from watching what happened to Hillary. And if he started yeah. lurking around like a shark in the water, like he did in that one debate, she'd probably turn around and say, "Sit down and and, and let me speak without trying to, you know." Do you believe that all the things that she's offering, similar to Bernie? Uh, are will ever come to fruition? Well, all of them probably won't. No, or any of them. But some of them will. Yeah, I think well, some like of them, some or, of or some Trump form of it. You know, uh, the the fact is that if you if you if you at least believe in a dream, you're thinking in the right direction. Everything you're going to do is going to is going to pursue try to pursue that dream. And I, I think having the conversation open about single-payer health care, I think to get it before the public and let them try to hear it, I think somebody who could take single-payer health care and not make people frightened of it. I don't know. For some reason, people are frightened about single-payer health care, and there's nothing to be frightened about. Does she want to take away all the private health care? Uh, there's 180 million people on uh, employer-provided health care. Phil, what and happened? What happened? Forget about employer-provided health care. Well, that's what she said. We, we won't have provided uh, 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 employer-provided health care. We'll have government-provided health care, which will be anybody who wants to be a doctor under it. If they want to be a private doctor, this how they it's how they run it in England. They have private doctors yeah. over there if you want them, but you have. You have the right to use uh, the uh, the national health system uh, if if you want to. But if you want to pay for a doctor, there are doctors who will be willing to take your money. Isn't that fair? You know, in this in this world, you pay for the services that you ask well, for. Well, no, that's not true. That's, that's fair in every other fucking country in the world. Well, it's every other country is not a republic that uh, has has a constitution like ours. What do you mean a constitution like ours? What constitution do you think? Constitution doesn't guarantee profit. I don't need to. I can't. I should not be required to uh, buy health insurance, whether it's from the government or privately, if I didn't want it. You know, uh, there's there well, should be no uh, Phil. You, Phil. You should Phil. Be Phil. You shouldn't that. be denied good, solid health care if you can't you afford it. Okay. How about that one? The only people that don't want it can't afford it. The only people that don't want it can't afford it. No, uh, any, 
Okay. Anybody that's got the money for it, they don't. Do you, you think they do without health insurance? No, no of course they, not. Yeah, just gotta... Especially if they're up in years. But you know, when I was younger, I didn't think I needed it. I didn't have it, and I didn't want it. Uh, and, and and tens of thousands of people die because they don't have it. Yeah. Because yeah, they can't afford that, to go to a fucking yeah, doctor. I don't believe that anybody gets turned away from a doctor. There's something called a Hippocratic Oath. And if no, they can't no. afford to pay, they they give them the treatment. I didn't say they got turned away. I say they died because they don't go to the doctor until it's too fucking late because they you don't have the money to pay for a doctor visit. I don't I don't know. I, well, I, you I, don't know. I, that's I, a fact. That's a fact, Phil. go to the emergency room for cancer. By the time you get in the emergency room for cancer, you're fucking dead. Yeah, you got to catch that before. Here's 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 what happens in England. The doctors over there who work under the national health system get paid bonuses for wellness. Yes. You know, in other words, if they take people and keep them well, and so this encourages them to to bring people in and to to. Uh, uh, keep an eye on them and to keep their health, uh, you know, giving them the constant testing so that people don't wait till that last moment like they do in this country to go see a doctor when they finally got something bleeding or whatever and they go and see the doctor and it's then it's either too late or uh, what's going to have to be done is is incredible and they don't have the money to begin with to pay for it. So what do they do? I mean, nobody should be denied good medical care in this country uh, for uh, no charge at all if they need it, you know? Do, do you think it's a choice uh, that you choose yeah. not to get the medical care or the preventative care? No, it's not a choice. Something else? No, it's a necessity. Doctor, I would be dead right now. Any one of my toes they had to amputate, if I had waited four fucking weeks, I would be dead now. If I didn't have $150 or $200, and I put off going to the doctor because of that. I probably would have lost my whole leg at the very least. That's how fast that shit progresses. I'm just not sure that this person couldn't go uh, and and get checked out. Hey, the bottom of my foot is uh, is got something going on. Phil, he's not, that's not what he's saying. What he's saying is, yes, people will go to the doctor when it's bad enough. When okay. it's bad enough, but by it, that time it's too late. Right. But, Charlie, you were being watched during the whole process, right, to see how it was right, going. Right, because I had health insurance, the minute my foot got the blister, I went to see the foot doctor. Oh, wow, I see. You were smart. You were smart. If I waited four <laughs> weeks until my foot turned black and started falling off, I would be dead now. So, I mean, Phil, that's what we're talking about. You know, and, the, and now let's say Charlie didn't have medical insurance, and let's say he waited till the last minute because he didn't have the money to go to a doctor. Okay. Can I you know, Phil. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Tony. You know what I was going to say? If everybody had a free basic plan, it doesn't mean the rich people aren't going to go out of a network. They can afford to see any specialist they want. It's just for the regular people like me and Charlie, you know, whatever, that you should basically not be afraid to go to the doctor. Say if I get up tomorrow morning and I'm coughing like crazy. Well, let's going to say go to the doctor. You have insurance. But some people will just put it off. Next thing you know, you got to walk in the morning. And I'll tell you, I've got, you know, I've got insurance, uh, pretty good insurance all the way around. And still, in all the co-pays and everything I do, I put out about a thousand bucks this year. You know, so some people can't people. even afford that, Phil, and they shouldn't have to. You know, you should be, you're an American. You should be guaranteed decent medical care if you need it. There, there are places they can go. No, you know. they don't know that, Phil. And quite frankly, those places make you jump through hoops. Yeah. Okay, uh, they make you feel where like... I live, hmm? where, where I live, there's a park. And right on the other side of the park, this homeless uh, advocacy group rented a storefront mm -hmm. and uh, up pulls a mobile clinic mm -hmm. and the homeless that you know mm -hmm. are, are around the area mm -hmm. come in and they get checked out and it's free and these services are open. and who's to, paying for the service i would assume the county oh really yeah you know because these people get uh uh you know it's 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 a county program you're assuming the county oh the county it is a county program 
Uh, you know, um, I can't see. Uh, I mean, Phil, all I'm saying, saying is, all I'm saying is, let's cut out the bullshit. Let's cut out all the here. Here's a handout for you situation and just say, hey, everybody in America, you get sick, go to a doctor. It's on us. You're an American. We take care of our own. What's wrong with that? Well, any, this what's van, wrong I mean, with us? A... What's wrong with us taking care of our own? Forget the fucking van. That's just a stopgap measure. So if we we don't take care of our own, we have homeless in the street. We have mental patients. Well, then all let's. The isn't it time we did something about all of that? Yes, yeah, but yes, they want it. Yes, Vernon. Has anybody heard about the uh, Trump administration doing away with medical special medical deferments for immigrants? Yeah. Yeah, he's done that. Let him die, he said. Yeah. Well, they reversed themselves today. Well, it affects about a thousand. It affects about a thousand people, mostly children, mm -hmm. who come to this country for specialized treatments because they can't get those treatments anywhere else in the world, including their home countries. They cannot live without these treatments, so they come to this country on a regular visa, and then they apply for a medical deferred visa. Mm -hmm. for the treatments. As long as they're here and they still need the treatments, then they stay here under the medical deferment flow program. Well, the Trump administration wanted to totally yeah. eliminate that program. Mm. And there were people who were going to be sent back to this one girl that they yeah. featured on Rachel Maddow last, last week was mm -hmm. going to be sent back to Nicaragua. She has this very rare genetic disease. Mm -hmm. And she came here when she was seven years old. And now she's 20 years old. And she helped pioneer the treatment for this disease because she was willing to come here and the doctors worked out the plan to keep her alive. And she's thriving under it. She's even gotten a college degree. Well, uh, you know, here, you know, we uh, we like to think of ourselves as one of the most progressive countries in the world. And yet we're one of the very few industrial. We're the only industrialized country that doesn't have single payer health care. Uh, the only other country that doesn't have it is China. Okay, and I've never been able to figure that one out because you're a communist country. I figured, hey, they yeah. would have health care, right? Does Hong Kong have uh, single payer? It's China. Uh, yeah, well, it, it's China, but the, I'm, Hong it's, Kong it, operates it's, separately. It's China. It used to be under the UK, so I would imagine they yeah, do. Uh, yeah, it was set up before China took it over. I don't know if they got rid of it or not, but it used to have single payer. Yeah. Well, all I know is my wife uh, gets paid by the China, you know, taken care of by the Chinese, and they have medical care, but they don't have some kind of, you know, single payer health care. It's insurance companies. China does not have single payer health care. So, uh, whereas. And we're, tomorrow, yeah? you're not going to have Phil to kick around. He's got Photo Club. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's where you beat up on the old people with your photos. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, it, it's time for us to get the fuck out of here. Uh, uh, thanks, Vernon. Appreciate it. Love having you here. Uh, thanks for calling early. <laughs> so you don't forget. Uh, no, it's, Had to it wake was, you up. Huh? It was fine. Don't even, worry. don't even worry about it. Jeff, great having you here. Phil, always good having you here. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I never thought I would live to say that. Uh, Charlie, uh, good having you here. And, of course, Tony, uh, you know, uh, we love the wallpaper. Everybody, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave back, and then we'll call it quits here, okay? There we go, folks. That's our uh, citizen panel for tonight. Let me hang up on them, and let me hang up on uh, the uh, Skype so that the next show, which is Jack Bishop and the Intersection, can use those Skype lines for themselves. Oh, see, see here, a girlfriend, let me borrow from her. This is a U.S. Open, and it's 2019. They don't have the, eight, the dates on most of them anymore. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, it's uh, the Franchise MC at uh, 8th. At 8.30, yeah, tomorrow night, Eastern Daylight Time. Then it's, uh, of course, Damian Chaplin, and he's going to do his program at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time. And tomorrow night, we'll be back here, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>